friends. Tonight we are going to talk about body armor points. A few months ago I began to see the same question uh, asked repeatedly, some variation of it, and it's a very good question. Uh, it goes something like this. I want to buy armor, but I'm on a budget. Will steel armor work for me? And that's a fair question. First of all, we often overlook plates and plate carriers too. If you're going to spend thousands on a nice rifle and five to $600 on a nice pistol, why not spend a little money to protect yourself? Armor shouldn't be an afterthought. I really, really don't like steel armor. Not one bit. You save some money, but at the expense of comfort and maneuverability. Wearing steel plates feels exactly like you'd expect, like you shoved a couple of steel targets down your front and now you're waddling across the field of battle or wherever you are in your irrational apocalypse fantasy. So I found myself never answering the question because I couldn't in good conscience recommend steel armor. This isn't the War of the Roses. You aren't choosing between House York and Lancaster dressed like a, a, a walking bucket uh, ready to charge your destrier at the enemy or take him hostage to ransom him for a sack of gold. Actually, that sounds kind of fun, but still, we're living in the 21st century. Steel armor is old news, very old news. So I started looking around for a set of comfortable polyethylene plates for $500 or less. Why did I arrive at that figure? Yeah, $500 is still a lot of money. It really is. But that's about the same as a good 9mm pistol. All you need for your white guy apocalypse fantasy is a good AR-15, a good 9mm pistol, and a good set of plates. I researched this for months, and then I bought the set that I chose to try for myself before bringing you this video. And this set from Tactical Scorpion Gear, these are the winners. These are truly excellent plates, and you absolutely cannot beat the price. These are the Level 3 Plus Extreme Plates, and they are awesome. These particular ones are the small, sappy size 10 by 12 with the multi-curve uh, for comfort. Hope you can see that. I'll never get this back in frame again, though, once I move it, so you'll have to deal with that. Uh, these stop M855, M855A1. They weigh only 4.7 pounds each, and a set of two is just over $520. However, thanks to Tactical Scorpion Gear, I have a substantial coupon code for you that'll give you 15% off and knock that price down to $440 or so. That is astoundingly cheap for plates of this quality. That's about the same as a cheap 9mm pistol. The M&P, Springfield XD, P10C, much cheaper than a Glock HK or Beretta. And I know a lot of y'all are buying those more expensive ones pretty regularly, so you have no excuse not to pick these up. The coupon code is the Gun Penguin, no spaces. I'll have that up on the screen for you, and it will be available down in the description below. Most companies will offer a much less substantial coupon code to YouTubers. Um, 5% or so uh, is the norm. 15% off is very, very generous of them. So how did I get the coupon code? Clearly, I've sold out, right? Not yet. There's still time, but not yet. As expensive as it is to make videos, I can't wait to sell out. Uh, if it'll buy me more guns and ammo, I'll make videos about uh, Olight, Sonoran Desert Institute, and whoever the fuck mints those bricks of gold and silver. Uh, uh, Tampax, or whatever the name of the company is, uh, because I guess people think they're going to trade for supplies with sacks of gold in the apocalypse like it's fucking Lord of the Rings. Hell, if it'll pay for ammo, I'll go door-to-door -door like a Mormon. Sir, do you have a moment to talk about Olight? And you slam the door in my face. But that's okay, because Olight is definitely made in China, but you can charge them with your computer. Anyway, instead, I got in touch with Tactical Scorpion Gear. I told them that I was buying the plates to see uh, if I'd want to recommend them to you all, and they offered to help. Um, I will never give something a positive review simply because the manufacturer helped me out. Great customer service is always a plus, and I certainly note that in my review, but I will skewer a product if it sucks. If these plates had sucked, I wouldn't be recommending them to you. After this initial review, I'm going to continue to wear these plates at most of my range sessions so that I can give you a full report on their long-term comfort. Most reviews focus on what the plates will stop. I'm going to focus on the other most important part, and that's feel. I've worn them at two range sessions a week for three weeks, and so far, they're very damn comfortable. Comfort is very important. If it sucks to wear something, you're less likely to wear it when you need it. Features. I called these plates polyethylene, but that's not entirely accurate. These are hybrid plates made of polyethylene, aramid, and carbide. These come in assorted sizes. This is the one that uh, TGS calls the small, sappy size and shape with the angled cuts at the top. Barring the angled cuts, the plates are 10 inches by 12 inches. They weigh an astonishingly light 75 ounces. That is really, really light. 4.7 pounds per plate, 9.4 pounds for the set. That's nuts, especially at this price point. There are lighter plates, but few for this money, if any. I couldn't find any. You can also choose from multiple different curvature options, straight, multi-curve, and a modified curve. These are the multi-curve. This is what I would recommend. You definitely want the curve. 
Avoid straight plates. Yes, they are slightly cheaper, but they are much more uncomfortable. The multi-curve is going to feel the best when worn for long periods of time, in my experience. In addition to the weight, the protection that these plates offer is another outstanding feature that got my attention. Most plates that are what manufacturers describe as level 3 plus won't stop M855 or green tips as they're commonly called and certainly not M855A1. Green tips are very common. I have a lot of them myself. Uh, so to me, protection from M193 and most 308 rounds just wasn't going to be quite enough. These plates are going to stop almost all threats that you might encounter in the U.S. So we're going to skip the part where I weigh uh, why you might buy TGS over another brand. Here's why. There are other lightweight plates around $500, but most of them won't stop M855, an incredibly common round. In some places, it might be more popular than M193. For instance, I live right down the road from Palmetto State Armory. They sell crates and crates of very cheap green tips, and people buy the shit out of them, myself included. Everybody in town has a PSA AR-15 with 10 PMAGs full of green tips, and God damn it, I wouldn't have it any other way. I want every granny to have a purse full of green tips and caramel candies. Uh, you know those awful motherfuckers who put sweaters and fanny packs on their dogs? In my town, those fanny packs are full of green tips. Around here, if you're going to get shot at all with a rifle around, it very well might be a green tip. It probably is. By the way, I'm saying most cheaper level 3 plus plates won't stop M855 because I'm not omniscient and there might be options that I'm unaware of. There probably are, but I haven't been able to find anything else with this amount of protection at this weight for this price. Level 3 Plus isn't a firm rating. Manufacturers just sort of use it to indicate something more resistant than Level 3, but not quite as sturdy as Level 4. If you have all the money in the world, yeah, there are some Level 4 options you might want to consider. But the ones that are anywhere near lightweight are going to cost you far more than $500 or uh, 440 after our handy coupon. So really, we need to establish why you would want these over steel. That's primarily what we're here to do. So, steel plates. By far, the steel plates that I'm asked about most often are the AR-500 ones, so we'll use those for our comparison. Traditionally, the advantages of steel in the minds of most shooters are the low cost of such plates and their ability to take multiple hits. Steel plates are essentially the steel targets you shoot at the range, only you shove them in your little plate carrier and you wear them heavy shits. Not ideal. You've probably noticed you don't want to shoot a steel target at close range because the bullet will fragment and pelt you with hot metal bits traveling at incredible speeds. Those fragments can maim or even kill you. Considering that the purpose of armor is to prevent maiming and killing, that's bad. A fragment to the neck would really suck the bag, wouldn't you say? So, companies spray a coating or anti-spall coating on the steel plates. The bullet passes through the coating on its way to the plate, and when it smashes against the steel, the coating catches the potentially deadly fragments before they can travel upward into your trachea or downward into your crotchal regions. The anti-spall coating is a lot like the, the bed liner for trucks. So, folks often say that steel plates can take many hits compared to polyethylene plates. That's just not accurate. Yes, a steel plate can withstand many, many, many hits from calibers for which it's rated before those rounds pass through the plate, but the anti-spall coating is going to wear out after a few hits. Having hot metal fragments plunge into your balls and carotid artery is only marginally less bad than just getting shot outright with a 5.56, if you ask me. But I'm also partial to my balls. I like them and they like me. We stick together. Sometimes they stick together, but nah, it's because it's hot in South Carolina. What are you going to do? Most tests indicate that this protective coating wears out after six rounds, maybe a few more, maybe a few less, depending on the caliber and where the plate is hit. And also the quality of the coating and how it is applied. That's very important. Not all coatings are created or applied equally. After that, yes, your steel plate is preventing the round from passing through into your important squishy bits and beyond that to parts unknown. But you could still be killed, maimed, or very much disfigured by flying bullet shit. But let's be reasonable and fair as we discuss multi-hit ratings. For the love of God, if you're in a situation where your plate has been shot so many times that the anti-spall coating has separated, fucking move, please. And also, you have far more serious issues to worry about, I would wager. Polyethylene plates. There are other types of plates, ceramic for instance. Ceramic plates have some drawbacks. And with this set of polyethylene plates as cheap as they are, we don't need to deal with those problems. Don't get me wrong, ceramic plates can be a great option, but they can, under certain storage circumstances, be less durable. I see folks using ceramic less and less as polyethylene gets cheaper. Still, I'd definitely take ceramic over steel personally, if those are my only two options. It's also worth noting that lots of professional users still say that ceramic is the best option. Ceramic plates have an additional benefit. After you're done using them, you can salvage the crack pieces to make your grandmother a precious moments collectible. Polyethylene plates don't have to be handled as carefully as ceramic. These are tough and lightweight. 
Polyethylene plates can survive multiple hits, but not infinite hits. Most are rated to take six hits from any ammo for which it is rated. Testing videos online show that many quality plates will successfully stop more than six hits, but you shouldn't take this as a certainty, and some plates might be rated for fewer than six. You just need to look. These, though, are rated for six with uh, uh, the ammo that I mentioned earlier. When polyethylene plates are hit, the back will often deform and cheaper plates will deform more, but they're almost always designed to deform in a way that will not harm your soft, fleshy body. Polyethylene plates are often as much as 40% lighter than equivalent steel plates, sometimes more, sometimes as much as 60% lighter. This isn't a hard and fast rule, but generally more expensive and higher quality polyethylene plates will weigh less than cheaper ones. Makes sense. Also, some of the cheaper polyethylene plates won't provide protection all the way to the edge of the plate, although these tactical scorpion gear ones do. Polyethylene plates are substantially thicker than equivalent steel plates, but given the weight savings, this is a fair trade-off. So why choose this polyethylene hybrid plate? These plates are rated to handle six rounds of 308 and all the various 556 loads, M193, M855, M855A1. Based on some of the testing online, I'd wager that these will last longer than that, depending on where the rounds hit, but don't count on it. And polyethylene plates don't produce spall. The bullet is fully contained within the material. This is the way to go. We see that, in practice, the polyethylene plates can handle just as many impacts as the steel plates, assuming that we're trying to avoid a serious maiming from the spall, which I would encourage you to avoid. But the bigger benefits of the polyethylene plate is comfort. The vast majority of the time you'll be wearing the plate rather than being shot in it, so that bit is one of the most important concerns in the real world. If you spend most of your time getting shot at, I would suggest moving out of Chechnya. These TGS polyethylene plates weigh 4.7 pounds each or 9.4 pounds for the set. The AR500 plate that I'm most often asked about is the Level 3 Plus. These are 8.5 pounds each with only the anti-spall base coat applied. You definitely want the build-up coat, which will add weight. The better the anti-spall coating, the more hits the armor can take before you are severely maimed by spall. The build-up can add up to a pound. This leaves you wearing 19 pounds, damn near 20 pounds of armor, and the set of plates is $320 with the multi-curve. AR500 now offers a lightweight level 3 plus set that weighs only 6.5 pounds with the base coat or about 7.5 pounds with the buildup coat, give or take a few ounces. That makes for a 15 pound set of plates at a cost of 350 with the multi-curve shape. The tactical scorpion gear set weighs 9.4 pounds, 9.4 pounds versus 19 versus 15 pounds. It's hard for me to convey what a difference this makes. Armor needs to do two things. It needs to prevent bullets from passing through it into your important bits, and it needs to be comfortable enough that you'll wear it when you need it. Steel armor is incredibly inconvenient to wear, and it isn't going to really help you survive infinite hits the way you think it is. The plate will survive, but you might not. I've heard those militia 3 percenter types mention these crazy apocalypse scenarios where they're wearing these steel plates and getting shot all the time with the plate protecting them many times over many decades. In reality, you're not a tactical super cool guy who is going to survive hundreds of shootouts getting shot in your trusty chest plate conveniently each time. You don't practice in your steel plates, you don't run in them, you don't lift weights wearing them at the gym. You're going to be fucked. You're not wearing pot armor brand steel plates. You're not Jon Snow in the last two seasons of Game of Thrones. If you, by some act of, of Zeus, survive a shootout after getting magically shot six times in the chest, the spall coating isn't going to last anyway, and you will have hauled all that weight around for nothing. So we see that the steel doesn't really offer the advantages that it appears to at first glance. Instead, its only real advantage is price. In the past, lightweight polyethylene plates were drastically more expensive, prohibitively so for most people, myself included. But with the tactical scorpion gear plates, uh, they're only 25% or so more expensive. It's an obvious choice. So what about the lightweight steel plates that TGS makes? These are notably less expensive than the equivalent AR500 options and are no doubt great plates. They're about 160 a set, and that's not including the coupon. That set weighs about 13 pounds with only the base coat, so probably 15 or 16 with the anti-spall coating. That's the same as the equivalent AR500 set, but the TGS ones are far cheaper. They're like half the price. So if you absolutely cannot afford polyethylene plates, these lighter, cheaper steel ones are certainly better than nothing. But still, please buy the polyethylene plates. It's hard for me to convey how much more comfortable they are. If you have any choice in the matter, don't buy steel. How have these plates performed? Christ, that was a long explanation of polyethylene versus steel, but this shit is complicated and I don't know how else to do it. For the money, 440-ish after the coupon, 520 without, there are few, if any other plates, as comfortable, and most other plates won't stop M855 green tips. 
So I haven't shot these plates to check and I don't plan to. Lots of other channels have shot these plates. Uh, many of their models have been tested by external labs. They work, you don't need to worry about that. Instead, I'm most concerned with comfort. Wearing steel plates sucks big donkey balls. Usually polyethylene and ceramic plates aren't much better, but they are lighter and that matters. However, these are extremely light. They stop some of the threats that level four plates will stop without the excessive bulk. Looking at these plates, you immediately notice both the quality and the nice curve. Yeah, check that out. Very nice. I ordered the multi-curve, uh, which is a slight upcharge. You definitely want the curve. This helps the plate to hug your uh, natural body contours. Flat plates suck. They'll do the trick, but they're no fun to wear. Being flat, the armor will contact your body at certain points across the back of the plate, applying pressure. The full weight of the plate on those small areas will start to create hot spots. This might not be a problem for the first hour or so, but after wearing these plates for an afternoon, you'll for damn sure notice. The quality of these plates is superb given the price. TGS says these are made in the USA. Online, this is controversial. It's most logical that these plates are made from Chinese materials in the USA. At this price, that's kind of the only explanation, and that's completely fine. Given how light they are and the quality, who fucking cares? Look the plates over. The curves are even, um, unlike a lot of the other cheaper plates. Also, there are no uh, weird bumps or bulbous imperfections. Uh, with the exception of a few mold marks down here that you can feel. Uh, nearly all the polyethylene plates that I've ever handled have marks. They have to be molded somewhere. And uh, these are under the outer nylon covering, so you can't feel them unless you're actively seeking them out. You definitely can't feel it when the plate is in the carrier. These particular plates are the 10 by 12 small sappy size. Whether or not these are exactly the size of real sappy plates, I don't know. But they certainly fit perfectly in a carrier design for such plates. They presently live in my Ferro Concepts Slickster, and that match works extremely well. When you put the plates on, especially if you're using a heavier one, you immediately notice how incredibly light these are for the protection they offer. When you put the plates on, especially if you're used to heavier ones, you immediately notice how light these are for the protection they offer. Compared to steel plates and some level 4 polyethylene plates, 4.7 pounds is nothing. After a few hours at the range, I noticed that the multi-curve is absolutely essential. I would never recommend buying flat plates. With the curve, it fits your body. You damn near forget that you're wearing plates over the course of the day. Yeah, wearing any kind of armor sucks. Sucks balls. But these certainly suck the least. Even with a loaded chest rig, outside of the first day, I never felt that building, biting pressure on my shoulder from the straps or those hot spots on my chest and back that come with a flat plate. My back in particular uh, seems to suffer from flat plates. I only used them once. They made my shoulder blades ache and actually uh, bruised them uh, from running. Uh, so curved plates also offer another benefit. Uh, you don't have to use much, if any, uh, padding behind the plate. It conforms so well to my body, there's no need for padding to dampen the plate bounds. These are excellent plates, the best I've tried for the money by far. But before we end, we need to talk about a problem, dear gun community. Whenever somebody mentions the importance of weight, some guy always pops up to say that weight doesn't matter and you should just go to the gym more often. That is the stupidest goddamn shit I've ever heard. If you can easily use a 10-pound AR-15, imagine what you can do with one of my 6.5-pound ones. You'd be able to tear some shit up, right? And the same thing goes for armor. If you can sprint a mile in your 20-pound steel plates, imagine how fast you'll be with these. Seriously though, the folks making these claims that weight doesn't matter probably don't use their gear. They wear their plates for half an hour at the range twice a year. They shoot their heavy ass rifles from a bench rest. Lighter stuff lets you carry more stuff and perform better. It's simple. And that brings me to my last point. Go out and train with your plates. It doesn't matter if folks think you look silly. You've got to get used to wearing the plates. You need to get used to moving in them. The human body isn't accustomed to carrying around that kind of weight on your chest and back. Trust me, there is an adjustment period. We're used to, to backpacks and that sort of thing, but it's different to have something pressed against you in that way. It feels very foreign. So practice, shoot your guns off, and train, exercise. You'll be much better prepared for your apocalypse or whatever scenario you're worried about. Final thoughts. So many of you have asked me about plates. I, I hope this was helpful. So uh, next, you'll see me take these plates to the range and do some different activities with them, and I'll give you a play-by-play -play of what it's actually like to wear these sort of in the moment. Hopefully that'll be useful for you. And with plates, hopefully we'll wear plates far more than we'll get shot in them. And that makes comfort so important. An uncomfortable plate is probably a plate left at home, right? So if you've got $400 to spend on plates, don't buy steel. Get these nice polyethylene ones and give yourself the ability to move well under stress. Armor is an overlooked component of personal protection. We spend all of our money and time on rifle and, and pistol stuff, uh, neglecting almost everything else. But protection is just as important. Some would argue more so. 
So instead of buying a third or fourth fancy rifle, if you have a good AR and a good pistol, you should strongly consider taking a look at a nice set of armor plates. Just don't buy steel. Thanks for watching, and I hope you all have a wonderful evening. I will talk to you soon. Good night.